Did someone say no to that? First, let me apologize for being late. It's not something I like to do, but I don't, I don't control the floor anymore, so I'm sorry. Folks are in late. Um, first of all, good afternoon. Um, I want to start first by recognizing Day of Remembrance, a time when our nation pauses to remember the millions of lives lost during the atrocities of the Holocaust and the valiant actions of those who risked it all to bring it to an end. This is a time to reflect on our fight against anti-Semitism is ongoing and we must combat it with everything we have as a nation. Last year, the instances of anti-Semitism rose by historic levels. And already this year, we have had two horrific shootings at synagogues, just last week in Poway and in Pittsburgh. This is a stark reminder that our fight against anti-Semitism is not over. We should all pledge to never shut our eyes to anti-Semitism and to continue to oppose evil wherever it may surface. That is why we should stand united to oppose BDS, the Boycott, Divest, and Sanctions, a movement that believes the state of Israel should not exist. We are introducing an identical resolution to the Senate S-1, which included anti-BDS language. It received bipartisan support in the Senate, more than 77 votes. How many pieces of legislation have ever come out of the Senate, especially this year, with 77 votes? The Senate has stood against BDS. The House should do the same. Now I want to shift back to discuss what is happening this morning within our congressional committees. Leading up to today's planned hearing at the House Judiciary Committee, where we expected to hear from AG Attorney General Barr, Chairman Nadler decided to change the rules to satisfy the very obvious desire to impeach President Trump. Only one time has staff questioned a cabinet-level official, and that was during the impeachment hearing. Attorney General Barr has been very transparent. If you read the Mueller report, the first volume, 90 percent of all of it is to the public. 98 percent is available in the second volume. There's no collusion and I believe it's time for our country to move forward. I know Democrats did not like the outcome of the last election. They did not like the outcome of 22 months of investigation, and they didn't like the answer. But this country believes we need to move forward. Attorney General Barr has been very transparent, brought forward um, the information. I think it's time to stop wasting this majority and actually get something done for the American public. So let me open up there for questions, which any of you may have. Yes, ma'am. Lindsey Graham said after yesterday's hearing, I'm done, it's over, I don't need to hear from Mueller anymore. Do you want to hear anything from the special counsel? Do you want him to come up here and testify? No, we've gotten, I don't need to. We've gotten all the information. I mean, think of the volumes and all the questions prior wanting to make sure what the Democrats were asking. Could we see the Mueller report? 90% of volume one is all open to the public. 98% of the second volume. If you look and listen to the American public, and not just my district, go to those who are running for president. Go to the Democrats who are out there. Go to Democrats who are in Congress that are having their town halls. They are not getting questions about Mueller. Yes, they are getting questions about health care, Medicare for all. They are getting questions about infrastructure and others. Shouldn't they focus on what the American public expects and what the American public wants? Yes, sir. President Trump reportedly has agreed with Speaker Pelosi and Senator Schumer to spend $2 trillion on infrastructure. Do you support spending $2 trillion, given that the projected budget deficit is $1.1 trillion and the national debt is over $1.1 trillion? I support working on an infrastructure bill. It's the pay for that real concerning to me, especially with the amount of debt that we have. There are bipartisan ideas out there of where you should start. One happens to be the GAIN Act. This is a piece of legislation that's supported by the Freedom Caucus, uh, and on the Democratic side, the Black Caucus supports it as well. And this is one that looks at excess government property to sell that 
and you could use that on infrastructure. It would focus on the 100 poorest districts in this country. I think that is a very good start of where we could begin. I disagree with the Democrats thinking they want to raise taxes to pay for infrastructure. Before they went to see the president, they said they would have to change the current tax code, that they would raise the rates of Americans. Now, this is not unusual for the Democrats. Their first bill, H.R. 1, would take, if they raised $200, would take $1,200 from the American public. Um, the current proposal by um, Democrat senator who's running for president, she now thinks we should raise taxes and give every American $600 so they could then spend on politics. Um, it's really a common denominator of the Democrats, but I think that would be a um, non-starter. Yes, sir. I think you have all the above. I think public-private has worked in a lot of places, and I think you should always utilize that element, too, to be because to use that element as we go forward as one of the options through here. Um, it's a way that you could leverage money further. It, it could go farther. And I think it works in some areas. In some places, there's other areas that work as well, too. So it's kind of all the above. Yes, sir. So Speaker Pelosi was standing at the podium about an hour and a half, two hours ago, and she said that the Attorney General has lied and committed a crime, and she said that the President defined congressional subpoenas for his officials to come and testify, blocking those, that that amounts to obstruction of justice. What's just your um, quick reaction to that? I, I do not believe uh, Attorney General Barr lied. I believe he's been very transparent in all of this. Um, I think if, there, if people are looking at who has lied in the process, simply look at Chairman Nadler. Chairman Nadler asked the Attorney General to come, and he said yes. After the Attorney General said he would come to the committee to speak to every member, they moved to change the rules. Even CNN cannot find any history of that happening before. The only time an individual, a staffer, Question somebody was during Watergate. Nadler has been wanting to impeach the day after the election. He can't have the facts to prove of why he should, but he will not stop. This is what the American public is frustrated by, the politics of attacking individuals. When you look at the Democratic Party, they now want to weaponize the IRS. They want to go after, continue to go after the president, they try to go after his family. This has got to stop. The American public wants us to move forward and solve the problems. Yes? Does the USMCA have the votes to pass? And do you think Speaker Pelosi should bring to the floor what bill is not going to make anyone feel safe? I believe that uh, Nancy Pelosi should bring it to the floor. One of the major questions that the Democrats asked before it would come to the floor is that Mexico asking another country to change their own laws, their labor laws. Well. The Senate in Mexico just did that. So I think it's appropriate that they keep their word when they said that's why they would bring it forward. This is a win-win for all. Um, and I believe that you would have a large number of votes from the Republicans. And I, the Democrats would only need a few to bring it across. And we could sign this and actually create even more jobs than we've already created in just the last three years. Yes, sir. Uh, we've had two uh, negotiations, uh, or meetings, I would say. Um, no solution yet. So Ongoing. Are you, are you optimistic? Um, Based on what you've seen, what holds up? I don't see a solution at this moment, no. Yes. Can I ask just a follow-up to Scott's question? You said that um, it should be all of the above as far as a pay for... No, he, he asked about he asked about public private. That's not a pay for. That's that's a, a, a model in which you can utilize transportation funding. Do you do you uh, oppose increasing at all the, the gasoline price? You know, I'm from California. Um, the average price of a gasoline, a gallon of gasoline in America, and I could get this wrong because I'm from California, uh, is roughly probably two eighty, two ninety. In California, we pay about 410. 
Now, the current governor, Gavin Newsom, he was shocked by this. He was so shocked last week that he wanted to have an investigation of why the price of gasoline in California was so high. This was after they had raised the gasoline tax in California. California, just in the last, and I might not get this exactly correct, in the last five years, I believe the revenues in California, just the excess of what they've been able to grow, is the entire budget of Wisconsin or in Arizona. You know how much money they increased while they had all that increased in revenue to infrastructure? Not one dollar. Not one dollar. And that, that is really a responsibility of government. So what they did, they spent this money on something else, and then they went to the American, went to the California and said, you have to pay more. You have to pay quite a bit more than all the other states will pay. Now, who does that hurt? It hurts those who commute. It hurts those of, of lower income. And then what do we do with this money? If the money went all directly to the roads, I'd support putting into the roads. But now we have a system that's much different, right? You have electric cars on the road, they do not pay. The money doesn't go just to roads. We go to bike trails, go to buses, we go to others. But it was supposed to be a user fee used to build roads. The other real concern I have when it comes to transportation, why do we have to wait more than 10 years after we pass a bill to fix our roads? You have a lot of laws that give us a uh, slowing of the building, which makes the cost even higher. We should really start looking at, when we start talking about infrastructure, the streamlining and our ability to build these roads faster because they'll cost less. They'll get done sooner, so congestion will go away. But when I watched the Democrats in the majority before dream of uh, these shovel-ready projects, I don't think America wants to revisit that process because I don't think we've got much out of that trillions of dollars being wasted. Yes, ma'am. Should the agreement be brought to the floor, though, while the tariff is pending? Oh, we're going back to the other question. The U.S. and Turkey. Yes. Any other questions? All right. Have a great weekend. See you next week.